from the Netherlands, we have some ridiculous stories. Netherlands proposes radical plans to cut livestock numbers by almost a third. That means no more steak <laughs> for the guys in, in the wooden shoes. Dutch farmers could be forced to sell land and reduce the amount of animals they keep to help lower ammonia pollution. Now, I find this quite interesting um, because they're finding ways to take away farmland in South Africa in, and now in various other countries, um, and it's not the same. Not the same mechanism that they're using, but they're finding ways of taking taking control over uh, productive land. Um, obviously, the farmers that are impacted here are not farmers that have one or two cattle and um, you know just farm because they want some food on the table for themselves. These farmers are commercial farmers with uh, big big herds and um, guys that supply. Um, from what I understand, the rest of the of Europe, or the biggest exporter in Europe of meat and poultry, as well as pig, and um, yeah, so this be a little bit of a problem for that area. So the whole of the whole the whole of Europe is going to suffer because of this ridiculous, um, you know, proposal that's being put forward. Dutch politicians are considering plans to force hundreds of farmers to sell up and cut livestock numbers to reduce damaging ammonia pollution. Yeah. After the highest Dutch administrative court found in 2019 that the government was breaking EU law, not an elected bunch of people, law by not doing enough to reduce excess nitrogen in vulnerable natural areas the country has been battling with well, what it is calling a nitro gas or nitrogen crisis now firstly the eu isn't has no elected people um it's they're not elected by any people um except for bunch of bureaucrats that are within the EU. So we have in the European Union, and that's why Brexit was such a big, big thing, is that you have a bunch of people controlling the whole of Europe um, that are not nominated by the people that they are overseeing or making decisions for. Uh, which is where the whole Brexit, as well as the fact that you pay them money and you never see anything forward. Now civil servants at the Finance and Agricultural Ministry have drawn up proposals which include slash, slashing livestock numbers by 30%, one of the most radical plans of its kind in Europe. Two proposed scenarios include forcing some farmers to sell emissions rights and ever and, and even the land to the state if necessary now selling emissions rights would that mean that they're going to charge them additional additional money for for having cattle or so is, is that going to be like a, a tax emissions tax on cattle mm, we'll wait and see what happens there the Netherlands has one of Europe's largest livestock industries. Okay. No more steaks, guys. With more than 100 million cattle, chickens and pigs. It is also the EU's biggest meat exporter. I don't know. I don't know if I can do without my steak on a steak on a weekend. You know, um, I know at one stage the um, in the Netherlands that farmers were subsidised for um, you know uh, for, for, for on meat on on meat and milk products and so on they were subsidised which is why you could buy um, meat for so cheap at one stage but I think that was in the seventies and the sixties um, so obviously that's now turned around and. Now you're going to get a double charge to be a farmer. 
Um, in essence, but what it's boiled, what it is boiling down to is um, in South Africa, in now in the Netherlands, and I think in Belgium as well. Um, the governments are making it so difficult for people to own land and farm land, and I I can bet you that the the next step is going to be like Belgium, where they are going to force landlords to sell their houses because. Um, they want to control how much rent people charge. Um, so I don't think that this is the first step towards, um, you know, controlling property rights. I think that South Africa, they're using the whole um, racist narrative and the old apartheid era. Um, they're using that. Um, if you go and re read up on it, it's not at all what happened. Um, in some instances, yes, but those farms can be traced back, taking all the farms away and, um, you know, which were traded, which was uh, sold, which were conquered. With the, these are all ways that you are allowed to g get property. And, and this is what happened in most of the cases. But, um, you know, as things stand at the moment, we have this situation where the easiest way to conquer people is to split them or to divide them. So it's the, the whole divide and conquer game. So at the moment, the, the globalists are playing the whole um, div division by religion, uh, Muslims against Christians, division by color, uh, blacks against whites. And obviously you have your people in the middle, but um, they few and far apart, I think, at the moment, because the left has gone so crazy, the liberals have gone so crazy, crazy that um, at the moment anybody that 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 is centrist is actually a far right Nazi, uh, homophobe, um, you know, and all the other rhetoric that they usually put alongside with that. So me myself, I have a bunch of liberal. Um, I support a bunch of liberal cases and liberal proposals. Um, but to be dead honest, if I look at myself today and if I go according to where the pendulum is at the moment and where, um, where our friends, on, on our liberal friends want me to be, then, I mean, I can't, I, I really can't say that I'm a liberal. I can't say I'm on the left. I can't even say I'm, I'm a centrist. I must admit that that um, if if I have to go um, according to to what what they've decided is right wing, then I probably am right wing. But the problem is I don't really give a shit what they think. So <laughs> there's that as well, guys. Thanks. Cheers.